Welcome back to Dorian ASEAN. You're still with me, Gauri, and we're moving on to our Blast from the Grassroots session. And today with me, I have Denise Chia, who is a technical officer from Wetlands International Malaysia, and we will be discussing uh, pre preserving biodiversity. So, uh, hello, Denise. How are you doing? Hey, morning. Uh, I'm doing fine. Okay. Uh, you are the technical officer at Wetlands International Malaysia, yeah? Yes, that's so right. So what does a technical officer uh, actually do? Well, um, quite a wide range of uh, duties. Mm -hmm, okay. But generally, we are going out into the field, uh -huh. uh, doing field work like uh, soil sampling. Let's say, for example, I do soil sampling. Right. But we also engage with uh, various stakeholders. Okay. Yeah, from the government to the local communities, depending on the, the type of project that we're working on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you can give us a little introduction on what biodiversity is. The topic for the day, huh? Yeah, that's okay. right. Um, I think in a nutshell, or to make it easy for everybody to mm -hmm. understand, biodiversity is... It's actually a short form. It's actually biological diversity. Okay. So it means that, you know, the variation of life forms. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you say biodiversity of fishes, so it's like instead of just having one species, okay. you would have like a hundred species. Uh -huh. So that's like high biodiversity. Right. Yeah. So why why is it important for us to uh maybe why is it important to have a biodiversity? environment you mean like high biodiversity uh well basically imagine if you only had one species mm -hmm. and let's say you rely only on one particular type of species okay so what happens when you lose that particular species mm -hmm. it will then cause a chain effect isn't it uh-huh yep. so it's good to have a uh, diversification right yeah. and also because of the interdependence yeah the interdependence animals. between species human right. animals plants the entire okay. ecosystem. Okay. Right. So, uh, what does Wetlands International do? Uh, Wetlands International, actually, we are the only global NGO mm -hmm. that looks into the conservation and wise use of uh, wetlands for people and the environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, what are the main functions of uh, Wetlands International, maybe? Uh, for us, in the Malaysian context, mm -hmm. is that uh, we engage with various stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So, from the government down to the local communities. And uh, what we do is we provide advice or even training okay. on how to sustainably manage the mm -hmm. wetland areas. So, okay. for the government, maybe we give them training on how do you... Uh, manage this wetland area okay. but for the local community it will be different in a sense that uh, maybe how do you sustainably use the resources right. of your wetlands so how do you provide these uh, services do you have workshops or do you actually bring them to to the location mm, it actually depends okay. very much because uh, we have to treat each wetland different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so Generally, it depends. If we work with the government, we will always see like how we can strengthen it okay. in terms of wetland protection or the sustainable use. But at the same time, let's say for local communities, then it's kind of like, let's say for example, they mm -hmm. always um, cut down 10 trees uh -huh, a day. Uh -huh, okay. So we will say, okay, to make it sustainable, right. maybe you only cut down 5. Okay. And for those 5, you do replanting mm -hmm. for another 5 so that in another cy circle, a cycle, you can actually come back and use those five that you have planted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but you only do this if they approach you and ask for your advice, is it? Mm, actually, no, because uh, we will always be on the lookout for threatened uh, areas. Okay. So, it is important to, if we were to wait for people to come, I think a lot of people, they are still not aware That's right. of these issues mm -hmm. that are going on. So, it's uh, very much a two-way, like we were telling Kamal, this is an important area. Mm. You really have to look into managing it well. But sometimes the government or local communities will say, mm -hmm. we have this area and can you help us, like guide okay. us how to uh, manage mm -hmm. it properly. So I'm just a little curious, how do you keep a lookout uh, for these uh, endangered areas? Uh, actually, our scope, the areas that we are focusing mm -hmm. on in Malaysia is uh, pretty much on 
pretty much on mangroves and peatlands. Okay. So it's like people, you always hear there are a lot of uh, news mm. on uh, mangroves being degazetted. Right. This type of issue. So sometimes the local community will communicate with us. Okay. But we are also on a lot of uh, national, com- like the national mangrove uh, community. Uh-huh. So through all these um, meetings, then we learn about the issues that are happening on the ground. And mm-hmm. then we'll say, you know, this is what we can do, what we need to do. Okay. And then from there, we get the ball rolling. Mm. Do you have like spies installed <laughs> <and> <laughs> in certain places? I wish. <laughs> but we are a bit small here, so okay. not enough manpower to have spies. So actually when you uh, say wetland, right, yeah. what does it refer to? Uh, well... There are a lot of definitions okay. for wetlands, but the one that we use is uh, the one that is uh, used by the Ramsar Convention. Mm-hmm. So basically, it is uh, areas of the definition are uh, areas of marsh, fern, peatlands, mm-hmm. or water, whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, uh, with water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish, or salt including areas of marine waters where the depth does not exceed uh, 6 meters during low tide. Okay. It's very long. Mm-hmm. So to make it easy for people to understand what uh-huh. are wetlands, I would always say that any area that is covered with water okay. that supports life, uh-huh. I would call it a wetland. Okay. So, but and it, the important thing is inundated with water, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have to be all the time. It mm-hmm. can be natural, it can be man-made. Right. It has to support life. So please okay. do not go to your local swimming pool <laughs> and say that's a wetland. No. Well, it is kind of uh, supporting humans, <laughs> <laughs> helping us swim. So. <laughs> yeah, I hope they don't get that, that wrong yeah. idea of what a wetland is. Yes. So uh, how are these wetlands actually, do they affect us, uh, humans? Directly and indirectly. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't realise that. Uh, let's say, I think it depends on where you're living. So if, let's say, you are living like the coastal community, mm-hmm. then you are very much affected okay. by these okay. wetlands because uh, they, first of all, they are your source of livelihood. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of products like fish or maybe you get uh, timber and then also they f- they provide protection, coastal protection. Okay. But for people like us who are living uh, in cities, right. you will not feel... Uh, that wetlands are doing anything right. but actually uh-huh. they do because they regulate like groundwater okay. and they are also like water they act as water catchment so mm-hmm. they actually prevent floods mm. yeah but these are things that uh, we don't usually take for granted because okay. we don't see the direct impact yeah and we don't realize the importance yeah. of it yes yes so what happens if we fail to pr- protect or preserve uh, these wetland areas oh that there are a lot of uh, consequences uh-huh. to that okay. um, because wetlands actually act as uh, carbon storage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a lot of peatlands and mangroves are actually very good carbon uh, sequesters. Mm-hmm. So let's say you were to lose your peatlands, for example, like what we have now. So what happens? Uh, you have uh, forest fires, peat fires, mm-hmm. and that causes haze. Right. Okay. And from the haze, when you have all this uh, carbon emission, it again contributes to climate change mm-hmm. issues. Mm-hmm. So it's a very cascading, very ripple effect if you were to lose your wetlands. So uh, this climate change that, that you were mentioning, is it, uh, is it that climate change affects biodiversity or is it that biodiversity affects climate change, you think? Well, for me, I would say that uh, climate change will affect biodiversity. Okay. Yes. Uh, what about the environmental issues that we are facing right now in regarding the, the wetlands? Mm-hmm. In what sense? As in, uh, as in, like, what are the places that's being uh, threatened now, maybe? Actually, wetlands are very vulnerable. Okay. Because, uh, as the name says, they are wetlands mm-hmm. and they are meant to be wet. But I would say with the expanding population and the there's always demand for food, for housing. Mm-hmm. So more and more of these areas are being converted, okay. whether for agricultural purposes or housing development. Mm-hmm. So the main threat would be conversion. All right. Yes. So uh, when these conversions take place, right, mm-hmm. it, of course, kind of, in a way, it 
it's uh, I would say damaging the the wetlands. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they are building all these houses and all. Does it have any uh, effect to this uh, development that is being uh, done in the previously wetland areas? I would say it uh, depends also again on okay. what, time, what type of wetlands oh, are you developing on. Okay. So like for example, peatlands. Mm-hmm. Peatlands, uh, let's say if you you were to drain all the water out mm-hmm. and if you don't layer your foundation prob- okay. properly, after maybe within five years, mm. you would see a lot of subsidence happening. Okay. And then you will get cracks in your houses right. and, you know, sinking and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, regarding uh, also their functions, uh, besides uh, providing, like, regulating the water and all, are there other important uh, things that we should know about uh, about the wetlands? Well... Uh, they also act as a filter. Okay. So generally, they would filter out a lot of pollutants from mm-hmm. the water. Okay. So then again, that water, it will flow either to the sea or it will mm. flow underground into your groundwater catchment. Okay. So when we use the groundwater, okay. so it's actually clean because these wetlands have already helped you to filter out all, most of oh, the pollutants. Okay. But I wouldn't say that y- it's okay that they would they will be able to filter all at Mm, once. mm -hmm, You know, it's mm. a very gradual process Mm, and there is always a carrying capacity. So it's not like you throw in uh, maybe 100 million uh, litres of pollutants and they will be able to all at once absorb and clean up the 100 uh, million tons of pollutant. But that's actually what we are doing is that we keep throwing in so much of... uh, rubbish Mm -hmm. and it is actually going in faster than what our ecosystem is able to filter out right yeah so besides uh because like wetlands international you guys are in charge of uh preserving and and advising and consulting what can uh people generally maybe uh do in order to play their part in preserving the wetlands i always think about that Uh (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah Actually, you sh- honestly, back then we always say mm. that, you know, the government should do more of this, right. the uh-huh. government should have more enforcement and all. But when you really think about it, as uh-huh. you said, it is really the people. Mm-hmm. Because what are the drivers behind wetland conversion? Uh-huh. It is uh, us, because we have demand for food, we okay. have demand for housing, and the building of more shopping malls, mm. and things like that. So it's more of a... Uh, wants rather than needs. Okay. And I understand that the population is growing and mm-hmm. that we can we cannot just say we only develop certain areas but maybe it's time that we look back and reflect upon mm-hmm. our spending habits. Right. Because we always uh, we are always chasing after the newest technology and okay. all but to make all these things all these things that we are using or the clothes that we are wearing, mm-hmm, the food that we are eating, mm-hmm. where do you get that from? You get them from the environment. Uh-huh. So that puts a lot of pressure on the environment okay. to support our spending habits. So people should start uh, thinking twice about what they want, focus on what they need instead. Yes. Okay. But then it's easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's, that's right. But uh, like what you, what you said, like, yeah, because... Uh, do you want new houses? You want new shopping malls and all that? Uh, do these people actually realize that by by uh, building all this and by um, uh, covering up the wetlands that they're actually depriving themselves of uh, the importance of the wetlands? Do you think most people are aware? Maybe they are. Maybe they are not. Mm-hmm. So that is what we have to do: okay. is to create greater awareness, mm-hmm. reach out to more people, mm-hmm. more levels of society. Okay. And at the same time, uh, also to push, because you might be aware, mm-hmm. but whether or not you are willing to act upon uh, it. To actually do something about it. Yeah, to make a change, it. then that is also something that, you okay. know, we have to look into. Are there, uh, what are like the activities you do to uh, promote awareness among like people? For us, uh, maybe back then, uh-huh. when we had more people, we okay. used to have a lot of uh, awareness uh, campaigns. Mm-hmm. But now it's just down to a few of us. Okay. So we work more with local governments okay. and the local community. Okay. So hopefully, 
quite ex- we are hoping to expand. Uh. Oh, right. So hopefully uh, okay. soon we will be able to have more awareness uh, mm-hmm. campaigns again. But there are also a lot of other NGOs that are pushing for the same oh, thing. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. But uh, like you said back then when you used to do campaigns, was it uh, at school level or? At school levels, uh, I think, yes, during, especially like during World Wetlands Day oh, or okay. World Mangrove Days. Yeah. So t- tell me more about this World Wetland Day. Yeah, I, I think it's the day where we're supposed to celebrate wetlands uh, okay. and uh, their importance. <laughs> so what do people actually do during, during <laughs> World Wetlands Day? I, I would think it would be nice if you could just go and visit a local wetland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think for us living in a Selangor, you can go to like Kuala Selangor. Oh, okay. you know, it's nice just to be outdoors and to see. But of course, again, not everybody it's not everybody's cup of tea, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. you get like mosquitoes and then That's you get... Right. In, you go into the mud, you get dirty and mm-hmm. uh, sweaty. <laughs> so, uh, in order to uh, protect these wetlands as well, do the corporate uh, corporates do anything about it? Uh, actually, there are more and more corporate oh, sectors okay, having CSR programs, uh, mm-hmm. corporate social responsibility programs, which I think are good, but I personally feel that personally feel mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that <coughs> they can do more because what they like to do is <coughs> excuse me they like to have um, one-off mangrove replanting events okay but it's not just going to the mangrove and mm. um, just sticking some pots into the mud okay because you have to look it look at it at a long term longer term like yes you go there now with mm. and you you plant maybe 1000 mangrove uh-huh. seedlings but what about the maintenance and ensuring that these seedlings survive oh. and actually grow into you know, healthy mangroves? Mm-hmm. So I would rather see them committing to at least like maybe three to five years rather than just having a one-off event. I see. But it's a start, so hopefully. So they don't actually follow up, is it? Mm, no. Okay. Okay, uh, besides that... Uh, Besides the corporate, maybe like go- going back to uh, what we can do, uh, do you think that uh, maybe increasing the awareness among the people and all that is is enough to to do it to go about it that way? <coughs> I think increasing awareness is definitely the first step, mm-hmm. and then also maybe um, how do I put it? Maybe come up with some activities, <coughs> simple okay. activities that people can actually do. And it's not very difficult. Simple things like uh, don't litter, you oh, know, okay. or think twice before you buy something, mm-hmm. or recycling. All this, even though it, you might not think that it relates to wetland conservation, uh-huh. it does indirectly. Okay. Yes. So, uh, going to uh, climate change, like you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when we have all these uh, haze problems and all, c- could it be due to uh, because that that we are not taking care of of the wetlands? Uh, yes, one one of it. Okay, especially because uh, haze happens when you have uh, peatland fires. Okay, and the very special thing about peatlands is that. They are actually ninety percent of it is organic matter. Mm-hmm. So imagine having uh like firewood ready on standby mm-hmm. and then you can just burn okay instantly, you know? Mm-hmm. So one of that's why we stress again and again that there should not be any drainage on wetland areas or conversion of wetland areas because mm-hmm. mo- a lot of it when it is degraded, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just irre- irreversible already. Okay. You can't go get it back to its original state. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to do so. Okay. What are other environmental issues that could come up from not taking care of our wetlands? Not taking care of our other environmental issues. Well, you would have, because uh, let's say... For instance, our wetlands, Mm -hmm. just now as I mentioned, it it also covers a little bit of uh, the corals Mm -hmm. and seagrass. So let's say if your wetlands are affected, then it's again a chain effect. Mm -hmm. And then other environmental issues like uh, you would have some problems even in the future with Mm -hmm. uh, flooding because of subsidence or even like... uh, 
what we call a uh, uh, what is that? <laughs> uh, your loss of uh, fish stocks. Oh, yeah, because okay. let's say like for instance mangroves. Mm. Mangroves are actually a nursery mm. for a lot of uh, fish and crustacean species. Uh-huh, okay. So if you were to lose your mangroves, mm. then this uh, cycle, this reproduction cycle will, will end because mm, there is no okay. more place for the fishes to... So they actually lose breed. their habitat. They lose their habitat and then it will affect us because then you have less fish. Right. Then fish will, definitely prices will go up. Okay. Yes. So a lot of uh, little effects that actually are intricately linked to each mm-hmm. other. That's very interesting actually because we don't think about it like that. You know, uh, we can be quite ignorant in our actions like, oh, this is this is nothing, you know, it's just one piece of paper that I'm throwing away or, it's a, or it could be like a plastic bag. Which, ah, yes, yeah, yes. which is quite... Uh, an issue right now. Yeah, but then again, that's why we always stress on awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And also uh, doing the right thing. Okay. So is there any, uh, do you have any events coming up? Uh, any Anything that you're doing regarding uh, the wetlands? For us, um, we are actually working with this local community in okay. Johor. Uh-huh. And there will be an event sometime in early September. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, we'll well, Mangrove Day falls on uh, oh. the 26th of July, okay. but it's also during the Ramadan uh, uh-huh. month. So that's why we decided to postpone it a bit. All right. Mm-hmm. So what, what, what goes on uh, on that day? Uh, it's basically, uh, again, mm-hmm. an awareness mm-hmm. program. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But this is in Johor, is it? This is in Johor, okay. so a bit not so accessible for uh, the locals here. But I'm sure right. there will be a lot of other NGOs that are planning things. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is there anything else that you want to... Uh, say regarding uh, preserving the wetlands before we wrap things up? Um, yeah, I hope that, you know, wetlands is uh, very, how I say, it doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Uh-huh. It's uh, not highlighted as much as we would like it to. Right. It's compared to like forests or mm. like s- certain uh, wildlife species. Right, definitely. So I hope that maybe from this, uh, people would take a bit more notice uh, mm-hmm. on, about wetlands and maybe read up about it. Okay. And there will be a lot of things that you would discover about wetlands that mm-hmm. you, you I mean, j- even me back then, things okay. that I take for granted. Oh. Yeah, and that would probably be the best uh, first step to helping conserve the wetlands. Yeah, because it does actually, like you mentioned, affect us in a lot of ways. Yes, We just does. don't realise it. That's yeah. the indirect way. And the direct way. Yes. It's actually a food source. and It's it a food source. It's mm-hmm. uh, it regulates your water. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sequesters uh, carbon. It's a carbon store. Yeah. So a lot of things that we do not realise are actually okay. you know, all these services provided by wetlands. All right. Well, thank you very much, Denise, for uh, explaining all that to our listeners. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, I'm sure they, they learned a lot and they will probably so. go uh, read up a little bit on wetlands hey, preservation. You can always uh, check out our Wetlands International uh, webpage. Oh, okay, which is? Uh, Malaysia.wetlands.org. Okay. Uh, but we are on Facebook too, so look for Wetlands International or Wetlands International Malaysia. All right. To each other. Okay, there you have it. So, uh, yeah, I hope... Uh, this will actually uh, cre- increase the level of awareness uh, among people, uh, especially the ones in the in the city as well. Yeah. Because it is it does still affect us, like you said just now, mm-hmm. or just not uh, directly. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It was nice talking to you. Thank you very much.